The River Class Cruisers are a series of seven late first generation starships, which are currently the oldest design to remain in frontline service with Earth's battle fleet. Intended to give the fleet a vessel capable of holding a battle line position, as well as being able to cruise far beyond Earth's solar system, the rivers were an ambitious project, one that fell short in some areas and far exceeded its requirement in others. Designed in the aftermath of the contact war, their creation came at a challenging time for Battlefleet. The days of the effective blank check the Nasian fleet had enjoyed were now over, and from an inventory standpoint, the fleet that entered into this new environment consisted of a handful of ships that were both half-lifed and short-legged. The Storm-class cruisers, the ultimate evolution of the fleet's wartime designs, were fit for system defence and very little else. If the fleet was to avoid fading into irrelevance, it needed vessels capable of operating beyond humanity's home system, and yet equally capable of performing combat roles closer to home. This left the fleet with a fundamental question as to the direction of its future construction program. It needed to choose whether to build separate, long-range ships for distant patrolling and short-range ships for home defence, or a single type that could perform both roles, a type that quickly became known as the Universal Cruiser. From a technological standpoint, building separate types was more immediately achievable, but the fleet was unlikely to receive the funding it needed to produce either in sufficient numbers. After much consideration, the decision was made to follow the route of the Universal Cruiser, despite the significant technological challenges. The post-war research program collectively known as the Starship Foundation Project held the promise of technological upgrades, but the arrival of these would be at best erratic. An unexpected breakthrough in any one of a dozen fields could result in rapid obsolescence of the fleet's newest ships if this technology could not be fitted. The relatively large size of the rivers was a manifestation of this threat. While all designs inherently require compromises, a larger hull required fewer. It would also be easier to incorporate changes and modernizations on a larger hull than a smaller one. The basic layout of the rivers followed many of the conventions of the wartime designs, as well as establishing some that would continue into the second generation of starships. Most notably, the superfiring layout of the plasma cannon turrets and missile launchers mounted in armoured housings. This allowed the rivers to bring their full anti-ship armament to bear over a much wider arc than any of the wartime designs. One antiquated feature that unfortunately was carried forward was the fitting of the main bridge in a high conning tower, which in service was rarely used as most captains preferred the secondary bridge in the centrifuge. There was also criticism that despite being much larger than any of the wartime cruisers, the rivers offered little advantage in terms of firepower and their armour protection was never more than modest. The increased hull volume was largely absorbed by the requirements for interstellar travel with much of the increased volume given over to fuel and stores. However, with their first generation jump drives, interstellar passages were painfully slow as the ships would need frequently to drop into real space to cool their jump drives and heat sinks. In service, the class were initially found to be disappointingly slow and unresponsive. However, they were soon to show their biggest advantage. Their large hulls made the fitting of upgrades relatively easy. In particular, the development of second-generation drives improved real space handling and massively improved the interstellar range. It also saw the development of the characteristic Rambau-style frontal hull, which presented sloped armour to fire from the front and broadside arcs. With the arrival of the Myth-class heavy cruisers, the rivers were officially redesignated light cruisers to reflect that they were no longer considered capable of holding a position in the main battle line. Their great range has made them the fleet's principal border patrol ships, and later allowed them to take on initial exploration work for Science Fleet. To date, Amazon is the only member of the class to have seen action. During the Ten Day War, she was the flagship of the Dryad Defense Squadron, and in this capacity was severely damaged during the Battle of Dryad. Ultimately, the rivers were a qualified success for an extremely ambitious set of requirements. While the initial performance of the class was disappointing, its ability to accommodate successive upgrades allowed for a long and useful life. 
In particular, the requirement for interstellar capability was at first a severe strain on the design, but once equipped with second generation drives, the rivers proved capable of ranging far beyond distances originally specified. While the ability of the rivers to accept upgrades was impressive, there are limits to the number of times new wine can be placed in an old bottle. The fleet's chosen course of action was to place value on the class's long range rather than attempt to enhance its fighting ability, a choice that has been vindicated by the long service careers the rivers have enjoyed.